What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for the first week of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some stocks and ETFs that you guys ended up putting in the call out section in our Discord group chat. So first and foremost, thank you to everybody out there that did drop a ticker symbol in that call out section. I really do appreciate it and I'm going to be covering as many of those tickers that I can in this video. And everybody out there watching me for the first time, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes to investing and trading in the stock market. So if you're interested in that, you want to learn more about the stock market, investing, and trading, feel free to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell for daily market updates, trading updates throughout the week, trading tips, as well as some personal finance tips sprinkled throughout the channel, the videos here on YouTube. And if you want to be connected further, you can join our 100% free Discord group chat, as well as our 100% free Facebook group. Both of those are linked down below in the description box. So let's start out this video very briefly talking about the direction of the overall markets. This is what I typically do every single video video throughout the week because it gives us as traders a better understanding of where the market is obviously pushing and what we can potentially trade based on whether we're trading large cap stocks leveraged ETFs, some penny stocks, even though I rarely do trade penny stocks, you know, the direction of the market really allows us to understand a lot of different things. So let's take a look here at the SPX. We all know over the past couple of weeks, we've been absolutely killing it in the SPX. And right now in particular, guys, we're trading in between this resistance, which is now a new support from the beginning of December at around $2,900 or $2,790 rather, up to around 2815, which was a resistance from back in the beginning of November. So if we zoom in a bit here, we can see that a little bit easier. Actually, no, we can't. We got to zoom in a little bit further. We can see we're trading right in between those levels. Like I said, 2790 right now at this current support and 2815, which is now the resistance. So what am I watching for this upcoming week, guys, in terms of the SPX? Again, we talked about this in Friday's and Thursday's video, but I'm just going to quickly recap it right now for all the new viewers out there and for everybody that did miss that video on Friday. What I'm looking for is now that we're holding above this support channel right here and the 50 SMA support. And we clearly see we had a pretty strong green day on Friday, up about 0.7%, up about 20 points. I'm going to start to see if we're going to fill to the top of this channel on this uptrend channel here on the 30 day, 90 minute chart. And I'm also going to be waiting to see, are we going to test that 2815 level where we did end up getting rejected a couple of days ago, back on the 25th of February in 2019. This is a very critical spot for the SPX because let's say we break to the downside here, we break the 50 SMA and the support of this channel. That's going to be a huge downwards trending or a downwards pattern rather for the SPX that will slowly be starting again if we do end up breaking to the downside. But if we continue this uptrend pattern, guys, we slowly start to push into the 2815, 2820 level. Obviously, Large caps, you know, the 500 largest U.S. traded companies, they're overall going to be moving to the nice green side if we do continue to push up, opening some opportunity in those, you know, large cap stocks as potential day trades or swing trades, right? Which again is why it's super important to understand where the overall market is going. So we can, for example, trade some of those large cap stocks that do well when the SPX and the overall markets are pushing up. So I'm waiting for that fill here to the top or for the potential break to the downside. The Dow Jones is looking very similar, guys. I'm 
waiting for the bounce on the support, on this 50 SMA support, and a potential test at about the $26,200 resistance. And if we do end up breaking out of there, we're going to be headed to the top of this channel, which is going to be at around $26,500, $26,600 if we do end up pushing to the top here. And if we look over to the 184 hour chart, we can see very similar to the SPX, we're trading in between this channel from the old two resistances back in the beginning of December and the beginning of November. Now, taking a look at the NASDAQ composite, we're trading or roughly right at that resistance. We can technically call it a new support now because we are slowly breaking above it. And we're trading really between that new support and this next resistance at about $7,200. And judging on this channel on the 30-day, 90-minute chart, guys, we are at the support of the channel, also on the 180 SMA support here. So I'm going to be watching if we do end up filling to the uh, $7,200 level this week, if we do end up pushing another 100 points in the NASDAQ composite, we're going to be slowly pushing to the top of this channel, continuing the uptrend pattern. But of course, like I said with the SPX and the Dow, if we break to the downside here, the 180 SMA support as well as the support here on the channel, that's going to be a huge, huge downwards move and there could be some more red to come if that does end up happening. So that's the overall synopsis here of what the overall markets are looking like. We are all, or rather the three major U.S. Uh, indices here that we look at on this channel, they're all at support levels at the bottom of their upwards trending patterns on this 30 day 90 hour or 90 minute chart rather and that's what we pretty much take away from this so what stocks am i looking to trade this week that could potentially benefit on the market continuing to push up and let's say the market does push down let's say we do break the support we're going to be talking about some stocks that could potentially benefit from that as well so let's just hop right into it guys i don't want to take too much out of your time today i kind of want to keep this video under about 25 to 30 minutes and let's get right into it guys so the first stock that i'm watching this upcoming week is square stock ticker symbol s Q and Square is a stock that's been going absolutely crazy over the past couple of days. So for those of you guys that recall, the stock actually tanked to $73 after they reported earnings, I believe on Wednesday or Thursday of last week, and it filled the entire gap back up almost 10-12% all the way back up to $83, so literally a $10 move in the stock in a matter of about 24 hours, which did end up being about a 10.24% move from the bottom here after market hours up to the peak here at about $82.85. And we see the day after, guys. What do we see? We see at about 5.05 a.m. pre-market hours on the 1st of March, we ended up tanking all the way from $83 down to about $77. And we chilled there for the rest of the day, consolidated on this support level at about $77. And how do I know that's a support level? Well, if we're looking back here, let's say to this uh, time frame here, if I can zoom in a little bit closer for you all, you can see we ended up topping off in square stock back on the 25th of January at about $77 to $78. And we're holding roughly at that level right now. We're technically not holding because we don't really see a reversal pattern to the upside quite yet. We don't see a green candlestick pushing us back into the $78 range quite yet. But let's say on Monday, tomorrow, we end up pushing up and we end up getting to the 78.30, 78.40 level, this will be a confirmation of the hold on the new support, which was obviously an old resistance. And from there, what I want to capitalize on is a potential fill from about $78 up to about $80, $81, which would be the previous resistance here on Square Stock. And another thing I want to point out, guys, we are still holding this higher low pattern and uh, really holding the support on the 50 simple moving average here on the 184 hour chart as well. So what am I watching for tomorrow? I want to see the hold at $78 
on this new support as well as the hold above 50 SMA here, the 50 SMA and to continue to push up to slowly fill the gap up to about $80.50, $81. So Square Stock is the number one stock that I'm watching for this upcoming week. Another stock I'm watching, guys, rather an ETF is UWT. And UWT this week, guys, ended up doing well for the first half of the week, but we ended up tanking about $1.15 this past Friday, down about 7% because crude oil ended up taking a dump. And we saw it in my video on Friday morning. I was talking about how crude oil was at a, at a very interesting spot, right? We can see it was at a double top formation, which is a pretty bearish formation. And we can see it was there at about 57.50 where we got topped off back in the uh, 22nd of February. Back in this time period, we ended up tanking down to about $55 from there. And we struggled getting above 57.50 again this past Friday. Uh, was it Friday the 1st? Yeah, it was Friday the 1st of March at about 57.50 and we slowly started to dip down. And what did that do, guys? That gave me the confirmation of a double top, which again is a bearish pattern. And that is why I ended up day trading DWT on Friday for those of you guys that recalled. But now I'm waiting to see if we can capitalize on the upside here if we do end up filling the gap back up and we do successfully hold this old resistance as a new support at about 55.50 on crude oil, which it does seem like we slowly are doing, right? We can see there's been some nice candlesticks of consolidation above this new support. So now all I want to see is a break above around $56, I would say, for us to slowly break above this resistance here, which is obviously an old support. And whenever we break an old support, it becomes a new resistance. So the fact that we broke that support here, it makes it the new resistance. So I'm going to wait to see for a break above $56, and from there, I'm going to be trading UWT, which is the bull ETF on crude oil. So that's the second one I'm watching, UWT, a 3x leveraged ETF that trades based upon crude oil. The third one I'm watching here to add more to my position is Coca-Cola. And this is one that I've been swing trading for a couple of days now. Ended up getting in at about $45 per share on the hold above this support from about a couple months back, the uh, the middle of October. And the end of August is where we got that support level. And that's what I was looking at to see if we were going to hold above this past week. We ended up doing it, ended up adding money at about $45 here and what I'm waiting for to add more money into Coca-Cola guys is a break above the 50 SMA here and above $46 which is what I've been talking about over the past couple of videos here I want to see the break out of this resistance which it's slowly looking like we are breaking out we saw a couple was it on Friday or Thursday we got a rejection no it was on Friday morning actually if we take a look on the one day one minute we got a, re a rejection on that 50 SMA on the one hour or the 184 hour chart, which we can see here on the one day, one minute, we ended up pulling back from 45.65 all the way down to 45.20. And we can see on the longer term chart, that is where we ended up getting rejected. But towards the end of the market, we ended up pushing back up. It looks like we found our bottom and curling back up until after market hours, we actually popped back up to 45.50. So this is a good sign that we're slowly getting out of that resistance here from after market hours on Friday. So I'm keeping an eye on Coca-Cola very closely, guys. And another one that I'm currently in that I want to add more money potentially into, if we do end up pulling back a bit and holding this 137 137.50 um, support is JNJ, &J, and this is one that I've been swing trading over the past couple of weeks with a gold target price to sell at about $140, which is the previous support, which is now obviously a new resistance. So this one, guys, it's been a slow mover. I've been holding it for about two weeks now, and I'm very happy with it because I did get in at about 135.50, 135-ish right around here, and I'm up a decent amount right now, probably up like 
percent. I don't even know exactly to be completely honest with you guys. Yeah, roughly about two percent now on my position, and I would love to get in a little bit more on the pullback if we do end up holding this support and start to push back up. I think that could be another good entry point to continue to scale in to J and J. And honestly, I just like the pattern that it's showing. We got the big dip. We got the double bottom here, which is a good sign for uptrend reversal. We're getting that. We broke above the 180 and the 50 SMA. The 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA, which is a very bullish sign. We're all getting we're getting all of these signs here from J and J that it's going to continue to push up, which is why I like to focus on stocks like this for swing trading. Although Coca-Cola is not really looking like that, so I, that is kind of contradicting my uh, you know statement, but. For all you guys that do know and know my strategy when swing trading, I like to scale into my positions. And that's what I did with Coca-Cola. I added a little bit of money into it at $45 on the hold of the support. I kind of did jump the gun a little bit because it's not really showing a full sign of an uptrend reversal. But that is a risk I am willing to take, especially with their dividend coming up here in 10 days where I will be getting paid. I believe it's like $0.40 cents per share. Let me just double check that for you guys because it does have it here. Yeah, about 40 cents per share. That is a risk I am willing to take. And again, if we do break out of $46, that's going to be an uptrend starting because at that point, it's going to be a higher high from the previous, which is what we like to see for an uptrend. So in terms of what I'm watching this week, guys, it's not that much, right? It's not that much. Really just Coca-Cola, you know, UWT, of course, and uh, JNUG is another one. This is a gold ETF. Of course, I'm always watching these ETFs for potential day trades like you guys, JNUG, and UWT, and of course, their inverses. But in terms of stocks, guys, not too much this week. Just Coca-Cola, JNJ. There's another one. What was it? Uh, um, what was it, guys? Uh, crap, I'm, I'm blanking out. Square, and of course... Uh, what was the other one? Walmart. Walmart's one that I want to talk about as well today. Walmart is one I want to talk about as well. And this one's actually breaking a bit below from where I intended to get in, which was at, at about the $99, $100 level. But if we do take a look at the trend line here, let me just quickly just uh, erase this trend set for you guys. If we can see this trend line, we're still technically uptrending right now, holding a higher low. So what I would like to see ideally in terms of Walmart right now, guys, is for it to break back into the 98 or rather the 99 to $100 level. Because if we do break above there, and you can see my alert right here, if we do trigger my alert, what I want to see is for it to fill the gap and continue the uptrend back up to about excuse me, 103 to $104, which if we did get in at about $100 per share, that would be a nice 3 4% profit margin on WMT Walmart stock. So Walmart stock, simply guys, I want to see the break above $100 and for it to fill from $100 back up to 104, 105, maybe even 106, which was a resistance from back in the middle of November of 2018. So now that I talked about JNUG a couple of seconds ago, let's take a look at JNUG's chart as well. This is one that you guys called out in the Discord group chat. Again, free link down below in the description box. JNUG is one that's been getting absolutely hammered over the past couple of trading days. We saw gold futures they got killed over the past couple of weeks. JNUG ended up taking a very big beating due to this. And we see a ton of margin of profit open up here on JNUG stock. We can see, or, an e or the ETF rather, we can see from about $13.67 down to about $9.85. That opened up a whopping 30% nearly in margin of profit. But the bad thing about JNUG ETF right now, guys, it's not showing any signs of a support. It's not showing any signs that it's pushing back up. We don't really see any green candlesticks in sight. And quite frankly, it's looking like a falling knife right now. So if we take a look over here back to the gold future so we can get a better understanding here. And again, whenever gold's going up, JNUG's going up, we can see gold futures 
they're looking like a falling knife as well. No green candlestick in sight, but the one thing I want to point out, we do seem to be very, very, very oversold in terms of the gold futures. We can see the RSI here is at 19, which is ridiculously oversold. And another thing I want to point out is we're nearing that 12, or actually we are at the 1295 new support level right here due to it being uh you know a old resistance right the old resistance when we break out of it it becomes a new support now this is the level that i'm going to be waiting to see if the gold futures end up holding above and if they do this could be a nice spot to enter j nug if we do end up holding here and slowly start to push back up so in terms of j nugs etf guys i want to see ultimately a break back into the 10 dollar range before even considering taking a day trade position or position in general in jnug so those are the ones that i'm personally watching i do have a list right here which i did end up talking about walmart so we can take that one off the list and these are the ones that you guys ended up calling out there are a bunch more that you guys did end up calling out but for the sake of this video i only picked a, a majority of them that i personally liked potential and saw potential in because i don't want this video to be 45 minutes to an hour because that is quite a long long video so let's just get right into these rapid fire right now starting off with billy so billy is one that we've been tracking over the past couple of weeks due to the nice pattern that it does have to offer but what do we see guys just like jnug this is showing a falling knife pattern, quite frankly. We see the top at about $21.50. We broke the first resistance here, or the support rather, at $19.50. It's looking like we're breaking the next support at about 18.30. We had about a 5.2% red day this past Friday. And right now, the next support level for um, Billy, you know, based off this chart, I would say is at about $17 per share. And I do think there is potential for some more sell-off in Billy down to about $17 per share, where that would be an attractive price to potentially buy in because that would put it right at the support level from back in the beginning of February and it also put it right on that 180 SMA support level as well and at this point the stock's going to be so battered down that it's going to be extremely oversold on the RSI as well and it's honestly already looking oversold here you know basically at the 37 level close to that 30 level which is extremely extremely oversold so this week i think billy can do very well you know we got to just wait and see where it's going to bottom off at and where we're going to slowly start to curl back up and there's going to be a ton of margin there whether it's at 17 dollars back up to about 18 dollars it's about four dollar or four percent whether it's from 17 back up to 1950 which is about a 10 percent and of course if we get all the way back up to 21 dollars guys which is a bit unlikely but you never know with the stock market anything can happen that would offer about 17 percent in terms of billy so overall would love to see the pullback down to this level right here for a nice entry point for the potential four five six percent margin up to 16 percent margin of profit that it does have to offer so neo is another one that we got a lot of requests for let's talk about this one very quickly so neo stock for all you guys that don't know this is like it's quote unquote the tesla of china i personally haven't done much research into neo if i'm completely 100 honest with you guys but this stock or rather this company did ipo back i believe in september of 2019 and we can see or 2018 rather we can see it went from five dollars up to fourteen dollars there was a lot of money being made in the two days that it did IPO, I remember that day very clearly. And from then, we ended up falling off all the way to about $6, held that support nicely for about a couple of months there. And now it's looking like we're slowly breaking out. We broke out of the resistance at about 840. We popped up all the way to about 1030. And now we're pulling back. And it's looking like we're trading right around $9.95 to $10. We closed the day at about $10.06. So what am I watching here 
for a potential further breakout in NEO stock. And remember, guys, stocks like this, you know, skeptical stocks like this could end up running 10, 15% in a day. You know, it does happen. We can see here this one ran from $6 to $8 in a matter of a day or two. It ran here a lot ran here in the span of a couple days. So what I'm waiting for in terms of NEO for a further breakout would be a breakout of around $10.20 roughly because that is where we ended up topping off back towards the end of February. We pulled back to about the mid $9 range and now we're slowly starting to curl back up. So either two things can happen here. One, we'll break out of the 1020 and continue to push up and probably end up hitting $11 if the stock does end up getting hot and of course if it does end up getting some volume another thing can happen is we can end up double topping here which is a bearish formation and we can slowly start to sell off back to that 50 SMA support putting the stock in my opinion maybe back down to around the higher eight dollar range maybe a 50 875 or even the low nine dollar range so that's what i'm personally watching and it does seem like we have an earnings report on the 5th of uh march so actually this should be a stock on everybody's watch list because stocks like this guys mark my words they end up going crazy to the upside or to the downside, especially after earnings. And the fact that there's earnings in two days here, I'm probably not going to be trading this one till after earnings because that's what I typically do. I don't like holding or trading anything before earnings or especially holding through earnings. That's a massive no-no in my book. Trading it, let's say you want to day trade it the day before earnings. That's fine in my opinion. Again, that's my personal opinion. But holding through earnings is a bit too risky for me, especially for NEO. So in terms of NEO, I'm going to be waiting probably till late the latter half of this week to potentially trade it and see what it does after <coughs> after their earnings report. So another one, Boeing stock, ticker symbol BA. Very simple here, guys. I've been saying this over the past couple of weeks. I got a request for this one about two, three weeks ago when it was at like $425 per share, roughly around here. And I said the same thing. At this point, guys, Boeing is very overbought. It's at all-time highs, and I don't like to invest or even trade stocks when they're this high in terms of their all-time high prices, right? Because at any single moment, this can sell off pretty drastically. You know, Boeing is a larger company. It's a very large company, actually. It's been along for a long, long time. It's been around. But, you know, Things like this, you know, sell-offs can happen to any stock, no matter if it's a big stock, large cap, you know, penny stocks. Of course, those are more likely for the big sell-offs to happen. But I typically stay away from stocks that look like this, especially at their all-time highs. Am I, am I saying that it's going to stop running 100%? Absolutely not, guys, because I did say the same thing a couple of weeks ago. And if you did buy it a couple of weeks ago when I was saying wait for the pullback, you probably would have made about 3, 4, 5%, 6% on your money. But again, this is my strategy. I personally don't like buying at the high points here because you're just wishing for more highs, right? You're wishing for more highs and you're not getting in at the absolute best price. Sure, if you were to get in on this pullback from 413 to uh, you know 400 if you were to get in here that would be a pretty good price to get in for a swing trade right I would not deny that but we're already at the high point right now so what I would wait for you know we can wait for the pullback to the 50 SMA which has proven to be over the past couple of months a solid support so guys you know, in terms of Boeing, very simple. It's already at all-time highs. I want to wait for a pullback, probably down to about 430 before building a position. So TWLO, let's take a look at that one very quickly here. TWLO, very similar here, guys. It's already at highs at about $123.90. It does seem a bit overbought here on the RSI. Let's take a look if this is the all-time high. This is the all-time high. In TWLO, am I saying it's going to 100% stop moving right here? It's going to pull back? Nope, I'm not saying that. I cannot tell the future. But my strategy, guys, I don't like buying at highs. I like buying at 
dip points when the uptrend pattern is confirmed and it's continued to uh, push up really guys right you know we all know this by now we all know my strategy I like to get in like for example for this one I would have been eyeing it up on the pullback here from 118 to 104 for a potential entry not all the way up here right we could get in let's say if it pulls back down to let's say 110 113 that could be a good price to enter but for now I'm waiting for the pullback in TWLO but I'm not saying 100% that the pullback is coming it can continue to push up for all we know guys no one truly knows what is going to happen we just have to react when the stocks are obviously open, when the market is open, that is when we can make our decisions based off of the data that we get here on the Think or Swim platform. So Amazon, AMD, McDonald's, let's take a look at these stocks. Amazon, I was looking at this one earlier, actually. It's looking pretty, pretty solid here. We broke out of this downwards trend back in the beginning of January. A lot of stocks have been breaking out of their downwards trends in 2019 in general. We all know the markets have been soaring. But what I like about Amazon stock right now is we're holding this 180 SMA support very nicely. But we see a strong resistance at about 1675. So really... Very simple. I would love to see a break out of $1,675, maybe back into the $1,700 range. And from there, guys, from $1,700 back up to about $1,760, I think that would be a solid, solid move right here in Amazon. Just wait for that break above there. That would be what I'm waiting for in terms of Amazon. AMD stock, this one's looking like it double topped at about, what is that, $25? But we are on the pullback excuse me, we are on the pullback here from $25 down to about $23. And it does look like we're holding that pullback, which is a very, very good sign. So actually, I do really like AMD based off what I'm seeing here. We did have a couple of days of push up. Let's see one day, two days of higher highs, higher lows based off the smaller term chart. That is a good sign that we did find a support on the larger term charts. But now what I want to see guys is you can see this level right here at about 2375, which was an old resistance. We are right at that level. What I want to see is for us to hold above here and slowly start to fill the gap back up to about $25. So basically from $24 to $25, I think that's a very, very attainable trade in terms of AMD and that is what I'm watching in this particular stock let's take a look at Mickey Mickey D's McDonald's guys the largest largest fast food company in the entire world hands down let's take a look what is going on in this particular stock here well this stock guys we all know it's a defensive stock. It does well whenever the overall markets are typically selling off, which is why we see from the month of October up to, you know, the end of December, roughly, you know, this stock was doing absolutely crazy, right? Just like Coca-Cola, just like a lot of these safer stocks, Procter & Gamble, these do very well when the markets are doing poorly, right? Is it, you know, because people are flooding their money away from growth stocks, which is why a lot of the growth stocks got hammered into value plays, into safe companies where people think their money will, will be safe pretty much, right? Very, very simple here. So this stock right now, guys, you know, it pulled back back in the, uh, you know, the end of January from 188 down to about 174. This would have been a very good spot to take a position but now this is honestly in a very tricky spot we do see it's a bit overbought here on the rsi we are approaching resistances at about 186 187 right here so i would be kind of cautious i think it's a bit too late to be quite frank to get into mcdonald's stock right now especially if you're looking to swing trade it because let's say you do want to get in now to previous resistances it really offers about 1.3 percent profit and a lot more loss potential than the profit potential so as of right now you know, I think it's a bit iffy to get in here, but let's say we do break 187. Maybe you want to, you know, capitalize on 187 to 191. Even then, guys, it's still, you know, there's still a bunch more potential for loss than potential for profit. So honestly, I'm not too interested in trading McDonald's stock um, until I see a pullback, maybe back into the 170s at this point. That's just my honest opinion on 
McDonald stock, ticker symbol MCD. Three more to cover before we do end off this video, guys. CMG, Chipotle, XOM, and ACB. Let's take a look at Chipotle stock, which again is joked upon heavily that I push the stock of Chipotle because I tend to eat Chipotle about two, three times a week. And to be completely honest with you guys, I've cut back on my eating out recently. I've been trying to save a bunch more money because saving money is the best if you are an investor and you're obsessed with the stock market, which I am, because you get to put more money into the stock market, right? So I've been cooking a lot of my meals. I haven't been eating much Chipotle recently, but it is funny when we do joke about that in the Discord group chat that I do push up the Chipotle stock because I eat a lot of Chipotle, but I actually have not been eating much Chipotle recently, just to be completely honest with you guys. But in terms of the stock, what I want to point out here is the longer term chart on this three year, one week chart. Actually, nope, that's not it. The 20 year, one month chart. So, for all you guys that don't know, Chipotle stock has actually been a $700 stock before. We've seen that back in 2015. We hit $750, then we sold off all the way down to about $280. Chipotle had some problems with its lettuce, I believe, like E. coli. A lot of things were getting, uh, you know, recalled. A lot of stores were having problems. People and, and investors, especially, were flooding out of the stock due to this, which is why we see the big dip. But now we saw a solid earnings report. I believe the stock has been turning around very nicely. And now we're at a level where we're at a previous support. And this is a new resistance for us, guys, right at about $611. So, you know, if you're looking at the 184 hour chart, you might say, okay. This is very, very overbought. I'm not going to be buying into Chipotle stock as a potential swing trade. But then if you look at the three-year, one-week chart, or nope, the 20-year, one-month chart, you can see, okay, there is some more potential in Chipotle stock, about 20% back to the all-time highs. But guys, you know, we do see some very, very strong consolidation. Literally, look at this. From the past... Literally from the beginning of February, the stock has not budged above $611 until this past Friday. What do we see here? We're slowly starting to see a higher low from the previous and we're slowly breaking up. So this could be a potential break to the upside for Chipotle stock. I'm watching it very closely, but let's say we end up breaking back into the high $500 level. That's going to be, in my eyes, a rejection on that longer term resistance, which honestly won't be too good of a sign in Chipotle stock in terms of a technical basis. So that's what I'm watching in terms of Chipotle stock. Let's go over XOM, ACB, because I already know this video is probably about 35 minutes at this point because I've been talking a lot, guys. I've been talking a lot, but what can I say? I do love talking about stocks. So XOM, Exxon Mobil Corporation. This is another one of those, you know, a lot of people consider value stocks, right? Exxon tanked from $87 to $64 just like many stocks did during this time period. And we can see from 64 back up to $80, we've been pushing up very strongly over the course of 2019. And we're approaching, we actually broke the uh, resistance here at about, what is this, like $76 roughly. And now we're trending up to slowly get to the next resistance at about $82. So right now, XOM is at a point in time where it kind of has the same amount of margin for gain as it does for potential loss. And by that, I mean, we have about from where we are right now up to the resistance, about a 2% margin of profit potentially to gain. But we also have about a four, actually, we have more loss margin for a potential loss. We have about a three to 4% potential for loss on this stock as well. So unless we get you know, a break out of here, a break out of the resistance to test the next all-time high, or is this the all-time high? Let's just say the high at about $87. You know, that's what I'm going to be waiting for to trade um, XOM, or if we get a pullback back down to about $78 on this 50 SMA support, that could be another entry point. But at the point we are right now, I'm not really considering trading XOM because again, we saw 
2% margin of profit versus 4 5% margin of loss. So I would love to see a little pullback here, tightening up that margin of loss and opening up, expanding that margin of profit so we can profit on the potential upside. So XOM is looking solid, but would love to see either a pullback or a breakout to the upside, but I really think we're more likely to see a pullback than a break to the upside because stocks like this, they don't technically, they do top sometimes on earnings report, but they don't always pump up 10% in a day. You know, that's not really um, too likely, but again, anything can happen, but I'm just really speaking from experience here. So that's XOM. And the last one we're going to talk about today is Aurora Cannabis ACB. So let's quickly draw out some resistances here on Aurora Cannabis, and we can draw out some support levels as well. So this stock, guys, it's actually looking like it's pulling back slowly to the support level at about $7 flat. And what that's going to do is that's going to open up a ton of margin of potential profit and it's tightening up that gap for potential loss. So if we slowly get to $7, you know, and we hold above that 180 SMA as a support, that's going to be a good sign that we're slowly starting to push back up. And at this point, I'm going to be waiting for the hold on this support to potentially fill the gap back up to about 820, which is a very clear resistance. So right now, guys, you know, it's looking like kind of a head and shoulders here, the shoulder, the head, and the shoulder, which is why I do think we can pull back a little bit more. But keep an eye on the support. If we do hold this, we can, uh, you know, potentially fill the gap back up to the upside. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, Feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching and supporting. Peace out.